And here on the phase two, we are going to add the secondary WAN and then create the subnet. And to show you how to configure the ISP in case you need to use VLAN or static IP, my secondary ISP requires static IP and the VLAN, just for the sake of lab. So let's go into settings. I'm gonna click internet two here and I'll switch to manual. And here I'm gonna put the VLAN. I use VLAN 203, so I'm gonna put that here. That means I need to use this VLAN in order to get the ISP connection. Without that, it's not working. In your case, you may not need to use VLAN, but if you need to, this is how you configure. Then my ISP doesn't have a DHP server, so I'm gonna use static IP. I'll switch to static IP here, and I'll configure the IP addresses. That would be 203.0.113.2. So I'm gonna add range here. And then, click apply changes. Okay, now my secondary ISP will start working and I can go and configure the networks. But if you want to check if this is really working, let's wait. And here you can see that my secondary ISP, in my case, Verizon, is working. So let's go into networks and I'm gonna change the default subnet. Now, remember, we already adopted this switch and an access point, right? Do we need to restart them to get the new IP address? Well, no. Turns out Unify ecosystem is smart enough. So when you change the IP address, the access point and switch doesn't need to be restarted. They can just renew the IP addresses automatically and get the new subnet from your network settings. So let's go into network and change my default subnet. This is gonna be my new subnet, 10.0.1.0 with the IP address.1. I'm gonna click apply changes and wait. To make sure that the, your access point and switches, they got the new IP address from the subnet, we can go into Unify Devices and look here. You can see that UCG Fiber IP address has been already changed, so the changes has been applied. And now the switch and the access points will come into Sense and they got the new IP address from the new subnet. And as you can see, my switch and my access point, they both got the new IP address here. Now, I want to create interfaces, but before we do that, let's upgrade to the zone-based firewall. We go into settings, policy engine, and traffics and firewall rules. And I click here, click to upgrade. This will bring zone-based firewall functionality to the Unify. It's not gonna cost you anything, it's free. And you just need to click upgrade and that's it. Just like that, we have zone-based firewall. Now I'm ready to create additional networks. I'm gonna go ahead and click to networks here and add networks like staff, guest, IoT, security, voice, and servers. Okay, all the network created, and let's talk about the importance of knowing what is your VLAN ID and how these networks are synced across Unify ecosystem. First of all, if you're only gonna use the Unify network gear, you don't care about the VLAN ID. You only care about the networks. What is the network name? What is the subnet? Because the network and the subnet is what you are going to use in the rest of the configuration of Unify ecosystem. You are not gonna add VLANs anywhere. Unify made sure to make it easy, so they introduced networks. And what is the network? Network is a container in the Unify ecosystem that contains everything you need to have in order to make subnet working. So the network includes name, in my case, staff. It has the IP address information. So this is the IP address that computers will use as the gateway IP address. The network also includes information about the NAT, what IP is gonna be used by NAT when the users get out. You see, I added multiple IPs on the secondary ISP and I have an option to choose which IP I want to use for this specific network when they get out. It also has the DHCP information, DHCP server, I mean, it has starting IP, ending IP, you can disable DHCP if you want. Everything is here and you don't need to know what is the VLAN ID for this specific network. If you use only Unify gear, you don't care about the VLAN ID knowledge. It's not your job. You don't need to worry about that. Just worry about the subnet and the label that is stuff here in my case. Now, next, you see, I created all these networks, right? Now, if I go into Unify devices, you see that my switch, the Pro Max switch, is connected on a port six of the Unify Cloud Gateway. So if I go into Unify Cloud Gateway, and the clip port manager. So this is where my Pro Max switch is connected to the interface six. And the interface six, just like any other LAN interface, have the default configuration of choosing the default network as the native VLAN, native ne network, and then 
allow all in the tagged VLAN management. Even if you choose the custom, you still add the network, not just VLANs. Yes, there are VLAN information here, but you always use the network label or the summit. So what I was saying here, this is the default configuration of the interface. This means cloud gateway and the switch will be able to communicate across all the VLANs to each other. And the information that all this network exists is already synced with the switch and an access point. So we don't need to go into switch and create these networks separately or VLANs. It is done automatically. Now, if you go into switch and you check the interface that is connected to the cloud gateway, it will have the same configuration, default configuration, native network, and then allow all. That's it. All the networks can communicate through this one link. Now, what if we want to assign specific network? Let's say I want to connect the Akara hub through the Ethernet cable to my switch, right? And it's going to be in the IoT network, in this network, IoT. So we go into port management here in the ports. And let's say first interface on the switch is what I want to use for Akara hub through the Ethernet cable, not through the wireless. I'm going to click this guy here and I'll choose IoT and then block all now this block all doesn't mean to block any of the traffic what it means is do not allow other networks within this interface we will only deliver iot network to the hosts connected to this interface and nothing else so no other network will be able to communicate through this interface that's how it works i can click apply changes and that's it now, this interface will be for IoT only. You see, native VLAN IoT. Okay, so we have network segmentation foundation built, but no Wi-Fi yet. We'll continue with the Wi-Fi on the phase three, next video. See you soon.